Hey, what's up? It's me, Torgi Pro, and I want to help you out understand what a DHCP server is and how does a DHCP server work. So you might have already gone out to Google and searched for what a DHCP server is and how does a DHCP server work, and you come up with this result that says a DHCP server gives out IP address automatically to clients, blah, 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 and other features that you can read there, but there's a gap between understanding those definitions or articles about that DHCP server and doing it in a real life scenario and that's where I'm going to come in. I'm going to show you a DHCP server in action and how does it work. So when you search up Google and you have these diagrams about DHCP server, it's kind of hard to imagine those icons out there. But in real life scenario, those DHCP server, they're actually built in feature with networking devices like Wi-Fi routers, Wi-Fi access points, or those big routers, big switches that you can configure. They are also a feature of these Linux servers and Windows servers. The DHCP feature of this Wi-Fi router is what we're going to use and our client would be my laptop so that we can see. So I'm going to plug this one on the LAN ports of this Wi-Fi router here. And of course, plug the other end to my laptop. Plug it to my laptop here and of course make sure that this Wi-Fi router has power so this is powered on we're connected now if you do not know how to access a Wi-Fi router you can watch one of my videos here how to reset how to access and basic configuration of a Wi-Fi router or access point so you can watch that one here at this link you can check that one out uh, check the the IP address that we are going IP config so here on my Ethernet adapter I have um, my default gateway is uh, 192.168.1.1. We can access that one with our browser. So I'll just put in here 192.168.1.1 and then press the in. There you go. Log in. Let's go ahead and log in. Admin. Admin. Admin 12345. Now our focus here is all about the DHCP server and that all uh, the DHCP server is on our LAN. Go for LAN. And then you can see the tab here, DHCP server. Now, uh, the DHCP server or the configs of each router depends. So all you need to do is look for the LAN section and then uh, I can assure you that the DHCP server belongs there. If you try to see this one, DHCP server, dynamic host configuration protocol, is a protocol for automatic configuration used on IP networks. So my, my laptop right now is a host for that, is getting an IP address from my router now if you try to see this one enable the DHCP server of course yes that's why I'm getting an IP and then we can also put a domain name but for now we don't need that one now if you try to see here IP pool starting address the DHCP server will start to give out IP address from 192.168.1.2 to 192.168.1.254 here let's try and check our IP address here uh, you can go to CMD IP config let's look for the adapter where this laptop is connected you can check it here Ethernet adapter the IP address is 192.168.1.253 our default gateway is 192.168.1.1 there's another way we can check this one we can close this one you can go here right click this one uh, open network sharing change adapters and then this is our TP-Link network adapter we can go for status and then details you can see it here my IP address is 192.168.1.253 submit mask is 255255 uh, we can see the default gateway as 192.168.1.1 our DHCP server it means that we are getting the IP address from this guy the same our router and our DNS server is 192.168.1.1 all of this IP here are coming from our DHCP server now I'm going to try and change this uh, IP pool ending address I want to change this one up to let's say 100 and let's try to see if my laptop will get another IP because I changed this one so I'm going to save this one apply okay it's complete now we need to log in again admin admin one two three four five and try to check so it the this uh, DHCP configuration has already changed I'm going to go to CMD and IP config 
Now let's try to check if you, if you try to see my IP address changed from 253 to .33 <laughs> because we cut him off. The first IP address we got earlier was 253. Now when we decrease the IP pool here, it changed the IP from 253 to 33. If other computers are going to connect to this router, they will get IP address also automatically from the router. Now here on our default gateway, if we are not going to put a default gateway, the router itself will be the default gateway if we are not going to change the same with this one. Then a server, but this setting always depend on what kind of router or DHCP server config you have there, but concept will still be the same. What if we are going to try and turn off our DHCP server? We are going to enable DHCP server? No. So basically the configuration should stop later on. So I'm going to apply. Now that we're done, we can just go and say admin again. Admin 12345. Let's double check if that, okay, it's already set to no. So you click on the status and then details. The IP address actually here is still saved on the adapter, but if we try to release this IP address, this will be gone and it cannot get any IP address from that DHCP server. And I'm going to show you that. So we can release this one by CMD IP config release now when that is already released we can go in ip config and then renew this one again if you try to wait for this one this will not be able to grab any ip address from that dhcp server so if you try to check in our ethernet adapter we click on status and then go for details the ip address which is 192.168.1.33 is actually changed into 169.254.97.30 wherein this is called a pipa and I'm going to explain that one later on and one thing you, you will notice here is that the IPv4 DHCP server is already gone here that means that this PC cannot contact any DHCP server now if we try to connect again with our Wi-Fi router if we try to refresh this one we'll not be able to connect with this one because we do not have a connection with our Wi-Fi router even if we have that physical cable connected to our laptop. Uh, refresh this one and then there you go. It will give us error. So how will we connect again with this one? We go back to our adapter here. We need to set our adapter with a static IP so that we'll be able to communicate with our Wi-Fi router and we can configure that DHCP server back again. So right click this one, go to properties and then go to IPv4, use the following IP 192.168.1. Since our router is 1.1, we can use 1.2 and then 255.255.192.168.1.1 will be good enough. Okay, okay. And then we'll try to refresh this one again. Refresh. Let's wait. There you go we'll be able to communicate again because we have a static IP address with our laptop. So we can do admin and then admin one, two, three, four, five, and then go. So you check on here, it's no. Enable the HTTP server, let's see if it's going to work again, yes. And then we're going to apply this one. Okay, it's 100%, it's complete. Go ahead and admin admin one two three four five i want to check if it's already on yes it's on now we're good to go and set this one to obtain ip address automatically obtain obtain okay okay and then status details and then there you go it got the ip address again from our router you see we have the ipv4 dhcp server present again here now i want us to go behind the scenes and try to understand the dhcp server process on how they are going to communicate and get that ip configuration from the server because there are a lot of things we did not see behind the scenes so if you try to look at my diagram here Let's just say I have three computers or a laptop connected to a switch and that switch is connected to a DHCP server. Wherever that server is, it's connected to that switch. On a DHCP server process, there's what we call DORA, Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledge. This is what we call the DHCP server process, wherein if you connect your laptop or your computer for the first time in a network, the first step is going to happen, wherein what we call the Discover. This discovery stage, the laptop will send out a broadcast message 
to the entire network looking for a DHCP server. So if this laptop is actually a person, he's like shouting like, Hey, is anyone out there who can give me an IP address? I am a client here. I'm looking for a DHCP server who will be able to give me IP configurations. If anyone in the network is a DHCP server, they are going to respond. And this is what we call the offer stage. If that server is going to receive that discover or what we call a broadcast message from a client, he's going to come back with an offer with the IP configurations that is already configured on your DHCP server. So let's just say this is the scenario with our laptop that we have done earlier. Our DHCP server will reply with an IP address that looks like this. It's 192.168.1.3 with a subnet NOAS, default gateway, and DNS. If that server have sent that one, the client who have sent the discover packet will be able to receive this offer message from the DHCP server. And then here comes the next stage. And then the client who have received that offer will request this one from the DHCP server saying, okay, I got your offer. And then I'm willing to take this one to be my IP address. The DHCP server received that message again. And then the server would say, Okay, I got it. I will acknowledge it. I will save it here in my configuration. You will be the one who is going to use this certain IP address and that will be yours. And thus, the process of the DHCP server is done. But what if our computer cannot contact any DHCP server? Let's go back to the first stage. So we plug in our computer and then this computer is going to send out a discover packet, but then this computer cannot search for that DHCP server because there's no DHCP server present out there. This is where our APIPA comes in, what we call the automatic private IP addressing. The Windows function that provides DHCP auto configuration and assigns class B IP address from 169.254.0.0 to 169.254.255.255. So if you have an IP address that starts with 169.254, this means that your computer is connected to a network but cannot locate a DHCP server or there is no DHCP server responding to this client. That's why it cannot grab an IP address from your DHCP server. That is all about our DHCP server, guys, and I hope you have learned something from this video. And if it's your first time in my YouTube channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button like my videos and share it to everybody. Until next time, this is Torogi Pro.